An encoder is a sensor that can be used to measure linear or angular position. Encoders typically use optical or magnetic sensors, but both approaches use a similar approach to making the measurements. Here's a schematic of a simple rotational optical encoder. The encoder has three parts, an LED, hence the optical encode, a phototransistor, and a grating. The LED and sensors are fixed while the grating moves with the object being measured. As the object moves, the grating blocks or allows light to pass between the LED and the phototransistor. The resulting output from the phototransistor is a series of pulses. The microcontroller counts the pulses, and knowing the angle between each grating slit, it can calculate the rotation of the grating. One issue with this simple setup is that the microcontroller can't determine the direction the object is moving. The pulses look the same if the grating is rotating clockwise or counterclockwise. The solution is to use two sets of LEDs and phototransistors spaced a half a slit width apart. The LED transistor pairs are labeled A and B. When the grating rotates clockwise, the A pulse occurs before the B pulse. When the grating rotates counterclockwise, the B pulse occurs first. If you add pulse counts when the A pulse comes first and subtract pulse counts when the B pulse comes first, the result will be the total number of slits the grating is moved clockwise. This setup is referred to as quadrature. That is, we have two pulses that are out of phase and we can determine the direction based on which of those pulses comes first. Here's a picture of the inside of an optical encoder. The LED and transistor are housed in the black housing the grading disk for this system produces 200 pulses per revolution. That's a fairly low resolution encoder. You can purchase rotary encoders with resolutions in the tens of thousands of counts per revolution. The motors we'll use in this lab has a magnetic encoder. Instead of a grating breaking a beam of light, a magnet passes by a Hall effect a sensor producing an electronic pulse. Our encoder produces 12 pulses per revolution of the motor shaft, terrible resolution but the motor output goes through a 53 to 1 gear reduction, so we get a resolution of 12 times 53, or 363 pulses per revolution of the output shaft, or almost half a degree of resolution. To read an incremental encoder, a microcontroller needs to monitor the signal on the A and B channels of the encoder, count the pulses, and account for changing directions. One issue is that pulses happen fairly fast. If the motor shaft is turning at a slow 120 RPMs, or two rotations per second, and each rotation produces 363 pulses, the microcontroller will need to count a pulse every 0.7 milliseconds. That's faster than the tick count of our RTOS, so we can't rely on the RTOS to reliably count the pulses. The solution is to use the microcontroller's built-in hardware interrupts. The hardware interrupts can monitor a digital input, and whenever that digital input changes, automatically run a small piece of code called the Interrupt Service Routine, or ISR. This is similar to the timer interrupt we used to get our fast sampling times in a previous lab. The interrupt routine can check to see which channel has changed, and then update the encoder count. Here's an interrupt service routine that reads channels A and B and performs the quadrature calculations. If you inspect the code carefully, you'll see that it compares the values of the digital inputs from the A and B channels at the current time with the past readings, and then determines if the grading is moving clockwise or counterclockwise. It then adds or subtracts one from the total count. Notice the quadrature only tells you which direction the motor is going and then sends a pulse for each grading slit. You have to keep track of how many pulses there have been and in which direction to determine the rotational position of the shaft. And this value is relative to where you started keeping track of the pulses. You never know the absolute position of the shaft, only how far it's gone since you started tracking. That's why this type of encoder is called an incremental encoder. If you need to know the exact position of the shaft, not its incremental change, there are two common solutions. The first is to use an index mark on the encoder. An index mark is a small marking on the grading wheel that occurs once every rotation. This tells you the zero location for rotations. A system can look for the index mark and then set that as a zero position for the incremental encoder counts. Another solution is to use an absolute encoder.
An absolute encoder can tell you the position of the shaft at any time. Absolute encoders use a more complex grating with multiple sets of grating slits or lines. These lines are read using multiple LEDs and sensors. The pattern of the LEDs then tells you the position of the shaft. Here's a simple absolute encoder that can tell you the position of the shaft to within 45 degrees. Not very useful in practice, of course. The grading pattern produces eight unique LED patterns. This is actually a binary pattern based on the shaft position. The slide shows the LED pattern for all eight possible locations. In practice, you can purchase absolute encoders with resolutions of less than a tenth of a degree. Here's the grading for a pattern of a 10-bit absolute encoder. There are 10 sets of LEDs and sensors. This encoder has a resolution of 360 divided by 2 to the 10th, or 0 0.35 degree. The disadvantage of an absolute encoder is that they cost more to purchase and implement than an incremental encoder with comparable resolution. So far we have only talked about rotational encoders, but the same approach can be implemented to make linear measurements. In a linear encoder, Typically, the grating or scale is stationary and the head containing the LED and sensor or magnetic pickup moves. Your calipers, for example, use a linear encoder. Take time to review the contents of this video. You should know how a rotational encoder works, how quadrature is used to determine rotational direction, and the difference between an incremental and absolute encoder.